Hi everybody, this is Liz with 143 Handmade, and I am gonna, I just finished up episode 2, block 1 of the Crazy S Quilt, and I'm gonna go ahead and start on the next block, and we'll see how far we get. So, like I said, I, was, I hope to get one block per video, but we'll see. So, um... You might hear some thumping around in the other room. That's my dogs, my puppies, chewing on their chew toy. You can see I've got my line on the underside. And I've got this big piece for the middle. I'm going to start with some of my crumb bits. Let's see. This is a nice long edge. Let's go ahead and put this here. So I hope everybody's doing really good. Enjoying the series. Um, you know, my my big thing about this is remember that it's this is all about practice and, and learning and play. So there's not hard and fast rules. You know. Um, this is very meditative for me. I will um, until I started this series and I needed to, you know, talk to you guys about what I was doing. Um, it was something that, that I would do when I needed that little bit of quiet. So go ahead and turn it this way. Let's see if this piece is long enough. Nope. And so, um, let's see. I want to go ahead and salvage that, that salvage edge, but I can go ahead and use this bit. This side of it. Get it lined up. I need to scoop my chair over. Sorry that my chair is just so loud. Been looking at different office chairs to decide what I want to replace it with, and it's not an easy decision. <laughs> you know, there's so many different sizes and all kinds of price brackets. And I'm not a super decisive person, anyways, and so it's gonna take me a minute, but I'll get there. We'll trim off that little bit. Um, and I will go ahead and use that as a crumb. So, let's see. Let's go ahead and cut this this way. And just trim off that little bit. Trim off that little bit. And I do collect these because um, I do plan to do a bookcase quilt at some point. And so I've been collecting those, the, the salvages with words on them as just one element of, for that. So, and as you can see, I did double up the fabric here. I don't really worry about using more than one piece of fabric, you know, matching fabrics in the same piece. Some people get very fanatic about that in the same block. I mean, I don't... Um, I try and let this be one of those things that I don't, I don't impose a lot of rules on myself for. I, I grew up in a, a rather strict household, and so when it comes to my art, I get very, that's where my rebelliousness really kind of comes out still. I get very, you know, no rules. I don't want to, I don't want to play by the rules. I want to do it my way. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm just flipping this up after I've sewn, trimming off that extra. Now I can fold that down and turn to this side. And by using these pre-pieced um, crumbed quilt bits, you get a lot of the smaller pieces worked in there that you wouldn't have necessarily got without that. Let's see, I know I have some bigger bits in here. Some longer bits, I should say. Maybe the longer sides. Um, sometimes I use pinking shears, sometimes I don't. I don't really like have a set 
I'll go ahead and scooch that up just a bit. There we go. I don't really know like which fabrics you're supposed to use picking shares on and which ones you're not supposed to worry about it and all that. Um, I know that it does, the, the purpose of painting is supposed to be to help stuff from fraying as much. So, I don't know. I know that, that they're very heavy and cumbersome, and I don't really use them that often. They're just one of those things that I just, I have, um, because my mother and my grandmother were both um, quite uh, quite accomplished seamstresses, actually. They could, um, they both sewed um, clothing and that's you know to me is just like so far outside of what I'm going to be able to do <laughs> it's not funny but you know for them it was just second nature and so I have a lot of of sewing supplies from from both of them actually and I feel very very blessed to have that stuff but at the same time like some of it like I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. I don't know how to use it. Like, it's just, it just exists. It's just in my space. And so, you know, it's just kind of less than ideal. But I figure some of the stuff I will eventually learn to use, and I have. Um, and then some of the stuff I eventually learn that I'm just not going to use it. And I de-stash it. Um, I am, unfortunately, really the only crafter in my generation of the family um so i don't have like any cousins or you know siblings or anything like that to share it with and i think that's one of the things that makes it makes it kind of sticky because i don't want to just get rid of this stuff for to just strangers you know what i mean it's my grandma's or my mom's you know and so but working through it working through it we're getting there Follow this angle. And if you don't want to follow the angle, you want to keep it straight with the fabric, you totally can do that. And then and then cut your angle so that way what's left on your fabric still has a straight cut. I don't usually worry about that. Okay, and that did cover the corner, which is great. Okay, here's a good good something that I'm glad I noticed. See so this actually has a nick in it. I don't know if I just cut that or if it was already there. It doesn't even matter. I just go ahead and use it anyways and just sew right over the top of that. See, that's that'll be underneath this section. And it's like right there, so it's not a problem. That does not get in the way in the slightest. But I'm glad that I saw that. Let's see. Thinking I need to start sewing some of my little squares together. Create some longer pieces to have to add because these are not I don't have a lot of long pieces in this batch you know sometimes sometimes when I do this I end up with like a lot of strips depending on you know what I what I did like I made a um, what's it called the the friendship braid that's what it's called no, maybe not friendship braid but the braid you know and I had a lot of strips left from that one. And so my last crazy quilt had a lot of strips in it. And it was actually quite easy because I had all those strips that were just, you know, super long with, with the fabric length. And so check this corner. Yep, I've covered that corner. I've covered that corner. So now it's just these two corners. Um, let's see. Is this going long enough? Let's see where's my edge actually need to be? There-ish. Okay. So. And. So if I just do like so, it'll be just fine. And I will have some extra fabric, and that's fine too. You know, I'd rather have extra and have the, the blanket have a little bit of weight to it than not have enough. So. There we go. 
but I really enjoy doing the crumb quilting, which this is kind of crumb quilting, kind of crazy quilting. It's kind of a weird in between of the two, um, but I really enjoy doing the crumbs. So I have a new series that'll be coming out that's um, it's real time, no talking or very little talking. I do an intro and an outro, but like that was it. And then, um, so, uh, but most of it is just me, um, just me doing the real time crumb quilting. So you can actually see the process, see how I decide what goes where and, and all of that. All the way, you know, I, I do the sewing as well as the, um, all the ironing and the, and the trimming on screen as well. And that's just going to be a very low key. Um, Cause like I said, the, it's, it's very meditative for me. And so by doing it that way, Oh, I untried a menu. Hang on. I did that last episode too. That's funny. You know, sometimes I can go for days without unthreading my needle. And then I get on camera and I gotta do it twice in one day. What's that about? I have to snip it. Sometimes the end gets just a little frayed. I do have an automatic threader on here, but it's not working for some reason. I think I need to clean it. I've, I've tried taking this, my machine in a couple of times and to have it serviced and basically been told that the cost of the service was, is about the same as just buying a new one. And so I have not actually had it serviced, but I have watched lots of videos and whatnot online and tried to do a bunch of the cleaning and whatnot myself. So, okay, there we go. And I change my needle regularly, and, you know, all that stuff. So. There we go. I think I need some more. Yep. How much more? corner right there. So I'm just going to grab one of my little squares here. Let's, see, let's fold this up. Make sure I've got that square in the right spot. So that way it will flip over and cover that. Yep. Okay. And so there we go. Um, block number two, done. You know, sometimes they're super quick like that when you start with a big piece. Um, you know, it does it does go a lot faster, obviously. And now I'm gonna do my stay stitch. You know, and this is just one of those little things that, that you can choose not to do, you know. I really like to have the stay stitch on there. Um, I did it several times without the stay stitch and had all kinds of trouble. So um, I have I have learned that I prefer using it. But again, just like with anything else in this project, this is just how I happen to do it. It's not a hard and fast rule. There's, you know, um, when I put this together, um, I'll be doing some more trimming and whatnot. So anything that, as far as the stay stitching and, and all of that goes, it's, you know, for my process, I find it very helpful. And, but you will learn what you need and what you like and how you want to do it. Um, so let's see. I think episode two, or well, I think this is let's see, so three, but it's block number two. Um, I think this is going to be a rather quick episode actually. So, because I'm not going to do the cutting, I'll do that as a separate video um, after I have a handful of them 
done. Make sure that's pulled out. Yep. So, here we go. And there we go. Block number two is done. Look at that. That was super quick. So, let's see. Do we want to go ahead and do another block? Yeah, let's go ahead and do another block. Pull one of these from the bottom. So that way my lady can just stay there. See, this one's got some, looks like a cigarette burn mark. It's not, it's, um, we use a, um, a wood burning stove to heat our house. And this sheet was hanging up after being washed and it, a little ember got it. So, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and just cover both of those holes with the center solid piece. And poof, those holes do not matter anymore. And then I'm going to grab, let's see, looks good there. So it looks like this episode is actually going to have two blocks in it because the, that one got down really, really quick. So we're going to go ahead and just keep on going. Have the time that everybody's being quiet. So that's how we get stuff done. It's when things are quiet. Because anybody that has a house full of pets like I do understands. that just Or pets or kids, either one, doesn't matter. Both, both cause the same chaos. <laughs> Same type of chaos anyways. You just really, I never know what the day will bring. What kind of chaos is going to ensue that day. And I love my animals for that. For that very reason. So that way I don't know. I don't have a predictable life. You know? Because that just would not work for me. For my, my crazy brain. And I do think that I'm, I'm a little crazy. I think everybody's a little crazy in their own unique way, though. I don't mean it like as a self-deprecating, you know, or whatever that word is when you're, when you're criticizing, overly criticizing yourself. That's not what I'm trying to do. Just, you know, it's just my thoughts on life kind of thing. I think that we're all a little, a little weird, a little crazy in our own ways. And we just, you know, got to find our tribe that's crazy like me kind of thing. Let's see if I do, if I put on one more square onto this set of already done squares here. Sorry, I saw a piece, several pieces had fallen down to the side. So if I add another square to this strip. Now these are squares that I just got from um, that eBay haul that I did just the other day. And these are just the leftover bits. Because um, I got it for the greens, which are held aside with my uh, French rose quilt stuff, um, which you'll be seeing in a different series soon. But um, I, went, I went ahead and just decided to pick through and throw in the colors that, that I kind of liked for my, for my living room that worked with that color scheme because the ones that I make for my husband and I I'm actually quite picky about the uh, fabrics that go in that well in a way I am in a way I'm not because it doesn't it's not about color I just want them to have some sort of meaning to it like have it be fabric that I used for something that somebody that, that mattered, you know, and the quilt that's going to recall some, you know, memories of some sort. Let's see, now I just finished out this straight edge. All of that angle. Well, it's kind of a long one. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to start putting some pieces together. But it's 
go ahead and just focus on getting this block done. Hopefully, hopefully I've still got still got your attention. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I know I like watching. There's certain sewing videos that that I just I really like watching the process um, of how how they go through the through it. And so I'll play those over and over and over again. And that's kind of my hope for this, is that it becomes one of those process videos that, that people can watch repeatedly and have a new takeaway, potentially. But there we go. I'll turn to this side. And... I think I need to start putting together some of these little pieces. Yeah, I do. I think that needs to be one of my next steps. Maybe not. I think I can finish this block first, though. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do is I'll finish this block, and then I'll just have that be its own separate episode of creating pieces, creating strips for this out of my scrap. I know this to be a, just a straight line, not an angle, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut it. Fold that out. And we are back around here to this front side, or the first side. That's all the front. <laughs> you know. Let's see. Another piece. Let's see, is that long enough? Let's see where my edges actually are. Yeah, see, that's where my square actually ends. Right there. So this piece will be just fine, even though it looks too short. It's actually long enough. Because it overhangs those those edges. Put that square on the back. And sometimes the foundation will get a little wrinkled or pulled or puckered or, you know, all those things. I'm not that worried about it. It's It all works out in the end kind of thing. So, straighten out, flip this back again so I can make sure. Okay, and now that I'm getting shorter again, maybe some of these. See, I wanted it to be like five inches long, so that's a little on the long side. Let's see, Get this piece of denim will work. And like I said, I, I love incorporating denim into, into most projects. I think it's one of my favorite mediums to work with, whether you're talking about sewing or um, with the machine, or you're talking about slow stitching or um, junk journals. It, it really doesn't matter. I use denim a lot. So there we go. I didn't quite make it to the corner. Let's see. Yeah, there's the corner. So yeah, that should be good. Check this edge by doing the the fold increase. Okay, so obviously I need more on this corner. Let's see, there's that long, there's this long skinny strip. I really don't know what that little weird noise is. If you can hear that, it's quite distracting. Whatever it is. So. Go ahead and add this guy on. I 
And again, you don't have to worry about going all the way to the end of every single fabric. You just have to overlap your, your lines on the back. And that's something that you'll just, you'll learn to get a feel for. You'll learn to get used to if you start doing this. Comes becomes quite natural very quickly, much faster than you might believe. So yeah, so there's the one corners on this side. So let's see. Oh, there's just a big piece of black. But I don't think it'll quite go all the way to the corner. Yeah, I'm gonna use it anyways. That's what I have those little tiny corners for. That's what I saved them for. Just in case I needed to patch something. Um, and I don't do a lot of raw edge um, quilting on these, but I do do some. I did quite a bit on my last one, my last crazy quilt that I did for my husband and I, and I really enjoyed it. I really like the way that it looks too. So I'm going to grab one of my little triangles here. Make sure that I'm putting it on. See, that's where the corners are. So, gotta make sure I'm putting it on the right spot, you know. So, I will definitely cover that corner. And there we go. Put it over. It doesn't look right to me, but. So when in doubt, you can run your stay stitch. And then if you don't actually catch something, then you know you need to um, add a little more in that spot. And I do think I have a spot that I need to add a little more to. But I'm going to do this as if I didn't recognize that, just to show you how I would handle it. If I, if I had missed it before, before I did my stay stitch. So I'm just going to run around. Um, there we go. And I keep stopping to check just because I feel like it's lumpy. <laughs> this one's lumpy for some reason. I'm not sure. Maybe it's this different fabric. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes they do that though. Sometimes it feels more lumpy than others. But I really like texture on my blankets and things. Um, the the only problem that I have, um, because I do like the texture, is that, you know, puppies like texture too. <laughs> Only they explore it in a very different way <laughs> than, you know, humans do. So that has caused a few little issues, but... Go. This is our last side. Okay, so yeah, there we go. Here's our second one. Now let's double check. Oh, okay, see, I didn't cut those tails, and so they folded up and they got weird. So, let's see where my seam ripper is. I'm not seeing it, but I do have these fairly small scissors. I can get in here and snip apart that funky area. There we go. Okay. No, I did catch that corner. See, I thought that that's where I had missed. But no, I had in fact caught everything. In fact, I caught this area <laughs> a little weird. So I'm going to go ahead and just run another quick stay stitch along this area now that I have that all out where it's supposed to be. There we go. 
And those extra threads, remember the stay stitch should be within your seam allowance on your on your next piece. And so see, this is the area that I thought I had not quite got over far enough. But with the seam allowance and everything, it'll be just fine. Because um, it's just, it's right there. So it's not a big deal. So there we go. Two blocks done in this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me know what you're thinking of this um, concept and how I'm doing the videos. If you have any questions, you know, don't forget to add that to the comments. I will try my best to answer them. So thank you so much.